Hi, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to answer your comments on our latest vlog. It's vlog number 29. I am now in Kenya and I just came to the campsite. I put up the tent and yeah, I will be recording this video and a couple of other review videos. And after that, I am off slowly by slowly towards Uganda. But the first comment, Holmes is asking about how are the Jones bar working? Uh, I'm very happy with it, uh, but I'm going to actually record a review video about the Jones bar and about my experience about the different handlebar I have used during the last 10 years. That is the video I will record exactly after this video. Frederick is asking when the Arctic bike packing uh, trail basically will be published on the website. Actually, Tonelli have answered this comment and the Arctic bike packing route will be published in uh, arcticbicycle.com after around one and a half months. Culture of people is asking if I'm going to come to Egypt. Unfortunately, no, I won't. Uh, I start the East Africa. Uh, from Nairobi, from Kenya. Again, culture of people is asking, uh, once the review about uh, the bicycle I'm using, two to trains, Silk Road, I will do a review about that bike in the future for sure. Uh, Somebody saying you need a haircut? Well, <laughs> I think I don't. <laughs> uh, funny. And the next comment is from Marius. When you will visit Poland, uh, Poland is on my list of the countries to cycle, but yeah, I don't know when. It's very difficult to say after I'm done apparently with Africa. Yeah, let's see when, but I will. Paul is asking how I fix the orderly bag on the Jones bar. Uh, yeah, this again will be a part of the review video about the Jones bar, which I will publish the next. Alex is asking if I had uh, any issue with the traditional derailleur and um, chain setup when I was crossing Sahara. No, no issue. Uh, just you need to clean them often because there's a lot of sand. That's it. Ben is asking how many of those pull-ups uh, did you manage? Uh, well, uh, I don't remember. I think around 10 or 15, something like that. But yeah, I actually, I share a secret here with all of you. Next year, February, I am supposed to do 800 uh, pull-up in uh, two hours. My last record was I have done 390-something uh, uh, pull-up on, uh, like, in one hour. So, yeah, will be an interesting challenge and I am training for that challenge. I have one year time and you can see these are my pull-up bars over there. Someone which I cannot unfortunately pronounce the name, I apologize, is asking uh, how comfortable it is to um, cycle with the, those rain boots. Well, I really like to cycle with the rain boots in Scandinavia. The reason is because when I cycle, I also walk a lot in the forest. Uh, I don't know, I do many, many things. So in Scandinavia, we have a swamp, you know, it's just, and it rains and it's, the land is wet normally. So you end up having uh, wet shoes and socks if I have a, like a, a boots or whatever else. So these uh, rubber boots are really, really the way to go, in my opinion, in Scandinavia in the summer, autumn, and uh, springtime. Uh, how comfortable it is, the boots I used, it was Sievi, from Sievi, and they were very, very comfortable, but of course, sometimes it's really hot, so. Poak is asking, how heavy is the bicycle without um, water and food? Uh, well, I never weighted the bicycle, so I can't say exact weight, but, I think uh, a luggage weight I have on a bicycle uh, in the summertime in Scandinavia should be around, I would guess, around 50 kilos, 40 to 50 kilos. But regarding our luggage, uh, I carry like around now, I would guess 15 kilogram of only recording and editing equipment. So if I would take those off, the bicycle would be much lighter. 
But again, I do not like to emphasize the weight so much and being lightweight, lightweight, because these lightweight equipments, they keep breaking down. And nowadays it's a big advertising like a factor for the outdoor um, companies and the outdoor industry. And I really do not support this lightweight trend, to be honest. But I need to mention, you cannot really have a, such a heavy bicycle which you don't really move forward. So you need to have a right balance. But yeah, I carry uh, durable equipments usually. And I think without the recording equipments, my luggage would be around 30 to 35 kilogram, which is really, in my opinion, light for cycling. And I can do any kind of uh, terrain with that weight. But still, I am doing any kind of basically terrain with the weight I have on a bicycle right now. RADX is asking how um, I can uh, do the traveling, how I can get money, how I can support it. Well, uh, me and Matilda right now, basically we both work full time on our content. So yeah, this is, we work a lot basically, yeah. I know it might seem like, uh, no, we don't. Uh, we all the time travel. Yes, we travel, but when we travel, of course, when we cycle, we record. And now, for example, here I've been from 8 till uh, 6, 7 p.m. I've been just working on our content. Matilda in Finland does the same. So yeah, it is indeed a lot of work, but the thing is we really love what we do and we enjoy of it. And yeah, that is how we support our traveling. We have a Patreon page. Uh, people can be a member on our Patreon page and we get support from there. And when people order a postcard from us, we also uh, earn some money from there. But yeah, all in all, like it is in an edge. So yeah, we do not save or anything. And we are like around 8,000 euro in minus because of all the uh, electronics we have to replace pretty often. So... Yudan is asking, is the cottage I stayed in it in the forest, was it for free? Yes, the cottage was for free. Uh, it belongs to the, it's called in Finnish, Metsäholitus. I think it's in English, uh, forestry, Finnish forestry service or whatever it's called. I'm not sure about it in English. You can go and stay for one night for free. Um, but of course, you need to leave the cottage how you find it. And I have this rule, I always try to leave it better than I found it. Like uh, I clean it, uh, I make some fire starter, I, add, uh, I leave some matches and things like that. Wolf is asking uh, to show the details of uh, all the equipments I had on the bicycle. Well, we just published a video about uh, our equipments on the winter trip. So you can watch that one and yeah, if you exclude the winter equipment, then that would be our summer setup. From Yachi, what keeps you motivated uh, when you already travel the big part of the world? Which part do you still want to visit and why? And how to clean suit on your cooking pan? Mm, uh, first of all, I never clean the suit in my cooking pan. That's it, I just, it's, it's outside of the pan and I let it to be, doesn't matter. And, um, and regarding how I keep myself motivated, well, I love to go around the world and see different countries, see different cultures. Uh, I haven't been everywhere, every country, and every, every country is different. People, uh, they have different culture, nature is different. I just, I just love it. There's a lot to learn, a lot to learn, so. I enjoy a lot. Also, I set up different kind of challenge for me while cycling. So I like to uh, overcome those challenges. For example, sometimes I said, okay, like a today I do 180 kilometer. So I go after that. Or in one month I get from point A to point B, I do that. And, um, and other things, I have uh, so many uh, different projects, um, adventure projects, which I want to do. So I'm really, really looking forward to those ones. Like, for example, in Mongolia, uh, I'm going to cross the Mongolia with the, with the horse. I will get to Mongolia with the bicycle, but yeah, I wanted to 
go around the country with the horse and so that will be absolutely one of the trips I'm very very much looking forward to that and yeah that, for example now I'm in Africa in, in East Africa it's, it's different than West Africa it's just amazing amazing like a, this, this, there's so much to see so much to learn and yeah it's a never-ending knowledge and I think a one lifetime is not enough and I love learning. Poor Kate is asking, is it possible to install Tubu's uh, grand, um, grand Tour Rare Carrier and Front Expedition, uh, Grand Expedition Carrier on the Two to Train Silk Road bikes? You can install the Tubu's Front Grand Expedition Carrier, but uh, you cannot install the Tubu's uh, rare carrier because there is an integrated carrier on the Silk Road so you don't need any uh, rare carrier with the Silk Road <laughs> all right thanks everyone for your questions we appreciate it highly and I hope I could answer your questions and you all are happy if you want to support our content remember to subscribe to our channel and share our content with your friends, with your families, if you find it interesting. Much love to all of you, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.